as we gather for worship, we continue to give God thanks for his many blessings in our lives as we seek to continue the work that he has started within us. My prayer that all of us would continue to trust in God, that he would guide and direct our path. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God and loving Father, we have heard you speaking to us in the reading of your word. Now I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, that it would be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This morning, our reflection comes from the Old Testament reading of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And as we are familiar with this passage of scripture, the call of Abram. God called Abram from a place of comfort to go to a place of the unknown. Abraham, Abram family was migrating from Ur of the Chaldeans to the land of Canaan, but settled in Haram. It was while living in Haram that Abram got his call from God to go. And God was specific. Go from your country, your kindred, and your father's house. Imagine for a moment having to leave your family, the family that you love, family that you are very close to, to go somewhere unknown to you. You're not leaving for a vacation to know that you're going to come back. And you're not leaving because of a falling out with a family member or you're rebelling against a parent. It was not Abraham's choice to leave. If we look at it from our own thinking or reasoning, Abraham was at an age when today most persons have settled down in their latter years to enjoy their latter years, having lived three score and ten. But at the age of 75, God called Abraham to go to a strange and an unknown land. But in those days, 75 years would have been considered youth or a young adult because many of those, those persons who lived at that time lived a couple hundred years. And when we begin to read the Bible, and especially when we read of all of these prophets who lived to be over a hundred years, and we try to figure out how were they able to move about. Today, sometimes we get to 40, we get to 40 without any pains, any arthritis, we thank God. But they lived for many years and they had no trans public transportation. They had to walk or use whatever means available to them. Abram, father, Terah, was 70 years old when Abram was born and he lived for 205 years. Abram lived for 175 years. It therefore means that none of us should complain when called upon to do something for God that we are too old. Leave it for the youths and the young adults, the young people. If God can call Abram at 75 years, he can call us at any age of our lives. On our Christian journey, age should just be a number. When we are growing up, when we are young, a child and you ask the child how old they are, they're quick to tell you how old they are. I'm seven and eight and nine. And as they get to 20 and 30, it's difficult to find out their age. And when you ask an older person their age, they tell you age is just a number. They don't dwell on the age. What is important is our obedience to God. 
We must be willing to let go of the flesh and allow the Spirit of God to lead us. I'm sure that Abraham held his country there to his heart. He held his kindred and his father's house there to his heart. But yet Abraham was willing to leave it all to follow God. My brothers and sisters, nothing in this world should complete compete with serving our, live, our living God. Nothing should hold us back from living totally and solely for God. Is that not what Jesus told the crowds who followed him in Luke chapter 14, verse 26? Whoever comes to me and does not hate father or mother, wife, children, brother, sister, life itself cannot be my disciples. Jesus did not literally mean to hate them, rather be willing to leave them to follow him. My brothers and sisters, if we are serving God, our sole focus must be solely on him. And that is what Abraham was willing to do. How about us today? Are we at the point in our own lives that we are committed to serving God first and foremost? What is holding us back or preventing us from doing so? God told Abraham to leave all and to go to a land that he will show him. Abraham never saw this land, this land that God was promising him. He only heard about it from God. And oftentimes we neglect to follow God's will for us when God speaks to us because we cannot see in the future. My brothers and sisters, if we trust that God holds our future, we need not worry what the future holds for us. Abraham was willing to go. And further, God told him he will make him a great nation. Bearing in mind, brothers and sisters, Abraham was 75 years old and he had no children. This promise by God must have seemed unreal to Abraham. In the natural, Abraham could not see it, but he believed in God. Are we at that point in our lives when even though we have not seen that we believe that God can do what he says he will do? Abraham trusted God and had faith in God. Faith to the point where he was willing to let go and allow God to have his will. My brothers and sisters, that is the faith that each of us must seek in our lives today. Faith that even if we don't see, we believe that God can. God also told Abraham after making him that he was going to make him a great nation. And after making him a great nation, he was going to bless him. Make him great so that he will be a blessing. If we hear those words from God today, is our faith such that we would leave and go where God wants us to go? When we do the will of God, he will in turn bless us and bless us beyond our imagination. And for all of us sharing in worship this morning, we are truly blessed. We are alive to come to worship or to tune in on the various social media platforms. We may not all be 100% well, but we recognize that God has brought us thus far, that without him, we would have no life. And without God, we are nothing in this world. 
And so God promised to bless Abram, and he believed God will bless him. God also promised to make Abram's name great. There are many men and women who have given much in service to God and who have given up much to follow God. And today we remember some of them still, those who have blessed us, those who have been with us when we were younger, those who have encouraged us along the way when we faced hard struggles, those who have allowed God to do and to work through them and their service to mankind. And as Methodists, we remember our founding fathers and those who would have charted the course for us as Methodists today. Like Abraham, they trusted God. And so too, my brothers and sisters, we must be willing to trust God. Imagine for a moment, had Abraham decided not to obey God's call. Had Abraham said, I am comfortable where I am. I don't need to do something that I'm not familiar with. I would stay here with my family and my kindred. There would be no blessing to pass down to the generations. Abraham was a patriarch and a great example of faithfulness to God. Faithfulness for us as Christians today. He displays for us what God can do through us if only we have faith in him. And then God told Abraham that he will be a blessing. Abraham's blessing passed down through the generations. His blessing became blessings for those who were with him. God's promise to Abraham included receiving land, becoming a great nation, and the relationship with God that did not only benefit him and his family, but benefit generations to come. The blessing that God gave Abraham was going to bless other families as well. My brothers and sisters, when God blesses us, it is for us to be a blessing to others. Oftentimes when God blesses us, we are proud to say, God has blessed me. But what have we done with the blessings that God has given us? Have we used it to bless others? Or are we selfish in keeping it for ourselves? By leaving his country and family and obeying God, Abraham exhibit, exhibited faith in God. And so was able to receive God's blessings and to be a blessing to others. The question for us, my brothers and sisters, who have we blessed or who have we been blessing in our lives? Has anyone who come into our presence and left our presence left it feeling blessed? Is our faith in God such that we are willing to follow him and his will for our lives? What he says, we will do. Where he sends, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. My brothers and sisters, God is calling each of us to a life of faith, a life of trust, a life of obedience in him. We are not here because of some magic. We are not here because of something that we have done good. We are here because of God's grace and his mercy. Abraham's story had a great ending. 
God's promise was fulfilled. Abraham did become a great nation through his son Isaac, who was promised to him. Today, God wants to fulfill his promise to us, to bless us, to make us a great nation, and to be a blessing to others. God fulfills his promises always. Whatever God promises, he delivers. And so because of the world and its sin, God promised to send the Messiah, a savior of the world, his son Jesus Christ, so that we can be saved from our sins. Jesus Christ came into this world as a promise to redeem this world from sin. And we see his faith exhibiting because in every circumstance he called upon God and trusted God, knowing that he was not doing anything of his own. He was doing the will of his Father who sent him. When Jesus was leaving to go back to the Father, he called his disciples to go, to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel. Today, my brothers and sisters, we too are called to go. Are we prepared to go? Are we prepared to go into the unknown, to reach others for Christ? Are we prepared to go to the places where we would not normally be seen because we think of certain places as not suitable for us to go? Are we prepared to go on the highways and the byways and to reach others for Christ? Are we prepared to go into the prisons and the hospitals, into our schools, to give a word to those who need to know about Jesus Christ? Our world today is becoming more difficult and more challenging to live. We see all that is happening around us. And oftentimes we may want to give up because we feel that it is overwhelming for us. Our children, when they go to school, are challenged every day with peer pressure. Are we willing to nurture them in the way in which we ought to, so that they would grow to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Our young men and our young women are facing challenges as to which group or which gang to join. Are we in between them to nurture them and to point them in the right direction? There are many persons today who are facing challenges in their workplaces, having to stand for what is right. Are we encouraging them to continue to trust and have faith in God? Even within the church, many of us are challenged each day to stay on the right path. Are we willing to reach out to each other and give support where it is needed? My brothers and sisters, for the body of Christ to grow, it calls for all of us to do our part. It is not just left for a select few, but all of us are called to go into the world and to be examples of Jesus Christ. Today I want to encourage each of us as we reflect on our own lives. What have we done to bring others closer to Jesus Christ? What are we doing at present to tell and to remind others that there is a God who has promised his son for us, for our sins and the sins of this world, so that we can have eternal life. What are we doing as individuals to bring others to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? What are we doing as a group, as a class, as a church, as a congregation? How are we reaching out to others to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Today, God is calling each of us to go. 
each of us can be of service to God in this part of his vineyard. But we have to be willing to go. A two-letter word that means a lot. If we don't go, there are some persons who would not get to know of Jesus Christ. There are some persons who would go along in their own way, not recognizing that their souls are lost. And so as we prepare ourselves to go, God will give us the faith and the trust to obey his word. We will not count the cost. We will not want to know what the future holds. We will just be willing to go in faith and obedience to his word. I encourage each of us today, my brothers and sisters, that as we hear God's call on our lives, may we prepare ourselves for the challenges that are out there. If Jesus, who was sinless, Face those many challenges that he did from every corner. Who are we today? My brothers and sisters, God is counting on each of us. He's calling each of us to be of service to him. Are we ready and willing to go? Are we ready and willing to let go and to trust him that he will take us where he wants us to go. He will put the words in our mouth, what he wants us to say. And he will continue to direct our path if we trust in him. Let nothing in this world hold us back from wanting to serve God and for truly serving him. Because without him, we are nothing. If he takes his breath away from us, we are nothing. If he decides on a morning not to raise us up from the bed, we would just lie there lifeless. Each of us, no matter how young or how old we are, we have a part to play in building the body of Christ. May we avail ourselves to be used by God. May we allow his grace and his mercy to surround us to a point where we are eager to go out into the world and to be a testimony and to be a witness for service to him. May God give us strength. May God give us guidance and direction. And may whatever we do in this life henceforth would bring honor and glory to his name. Wherever in this world we are called to serve, may we be willing to serve wholeheartedly, knowing that our faith in God would see us through. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.